you know, various House members talking about how they, they wanted to impeach him. They filed a bill. But it even goes further. The media has been literally obsessed with pushing the idea of an impeachment long before the president was even elected. We're going to get to some of those examples in just a minute. But first, let's bring in former White House advisor to the president and the host of American First with Dr. Sebastian Gorka, friend of the show, Seb Gorka. How are you, Seb? Um, I'm very good, my friends, even though this is... Uh... A day in infamy, the second ever impeachment of the same man, this time against a private citizen. It's a disgrace. And but the you Democrats know what? I think, I think um, we should mark it on the calendar because, you know, we, we did one last year. So somewhere at the end of January next year, we should just do this again and make it like an annual thing. Maybe a three-day weekend, you get a day off. But it's becoming something that, like, just Democrats want to do. So, you know, maybe we make it like a, a January holiday. Uh, but getting back to what I said in the intro, we did some digging. And if you haven't figured this out, the media really can't get enough of impeachment. Um, take a look at this Politico article. It was published in April of 2016. It was titled, Could Trump Be Impeached Shortly After He Takes Office? Now, let's keep in mind, that was before he was even the Republican <laughs> nominee, before he was the nominee, before the convention. Then we found this article from CNN. Professor predicted Trump win, says he will be impeached. And, of course, finally, my favorite of all, where I go for all my political uh, information vanity fair, because I know it's known for its hard-hitting <laughs> journalism. Uh, it says Democrats are paving the way to impeach Donald Trump. I, I mean, these guys literally, as a candidate, were already talking about it. Yeah, I'll raise your vanity fair, I'll see your politico, and I'll add a Washington Post. Let's not forget, 19 minutes after Donald Trump raised his right hand and was sworn as the 45th Commander-in-Chief of the United States, the Washington Post has an article, the impeachment of Donald Trump starts now. 19 minutes. He hadn't even got to the Oval Office. This is psychopathy. These people are deranged. And let's not forget, you know, a perfect example of the psychop psychopathy. Rashida Tlaib, in front of her little child, the day she is sworn in as a representative of Congress, says, we're here, we're here to impeach the mf -er. The loonies. They're direct. TDS it used to be funny. TDS, Trump Derangement Syndrome, is now a clinical condition. Nancy Chuck and all of them have it. I just wonder if it's covered under Obamacare, but that's a whole nother. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Wow. Uh, Seb, the New York Times today had an interesting piece in their brief where they said that Donald Trump has, a lo has long used a speaking style that seems deliberately murky. Uh, his supporters <laughs> hear him delivering a clear message even when he stops short, explicitly delivering that message. The, the article goes on to talk about how, you know, the Democrats are going to say his words incited violence. The, the Republicans will say they didn't. But their point was that he almost has this secret language that he uses to tell his supporters what to do and speaks in code to them and they go do it. How insane to be <laughs> accusing him of Jedi words he tricks. never even said. Jedi mind tricks. These are not the presidents you are looking for. I mean, come on. The president, Donald Trump, has a murky way of speaking. Literally, the arch communicator, the man who had 14 seasons of the most popular reality TV show in America, is the murky... If he's a murky communicator, then Beijing Biden is speaking Chinese when he opens his mouth. Come on, guys. This is worse. This, this is like SNL when SNL used to be funny. Yeah. Well, speaking of, you know, I, I actually, this dovetails off of what you were just saying. Politico actually had a story out about Trump imagining his next comeback, and they liken the impeachment trial to what you just referred to, The Apprentice. Uh, and we both know the president personally, Seb. Uh, we've seen him face a lot of adversity over the past five years. Uh, you know, it's funny, like, there's these stories about how he's going to bounce back. I'm not sure that he ever you know, sees himself as bouncing back. I think he's still there. Look at the hold he has on the Republican Party. It's not that he has to come back. It's that he's still there. Okay, two things. He is the de facto kingmaker on the right in perpetuity as long as he wants to be. There is nobody who can fill a, a stadium like he can as a person who's not a politician. Secondly, he lives 
utterly rent-free in the heads of the mainstream legacy fake news media and the Democrat Party. And lastly, the, the important point about today, this outrageous, absurd impeachment of a private citizen, it now meets, means, thank you, Democrats, that we could impeach, oh, I don't know, Vice President Biden for invoking the Logan Act against Mike Flynn, or I don't know, how about President Obama for instigating a secret illegal surveillance operation against people like you and me when we were in a campaign, when we worked in a transition team, and when we worked in the White House. So thank you, guys. I recommend an impeachment for both Biden and Obama. Hey, I've, I literally have a quick question for you. I was going to ask Hogan Gidley this, but, you know, we were talking to him. Lindsay and I were noting that he doesn't have Twitter now. He's been kind of silent. Just guess for me. When do you think, pick a day, that we will hear from President Trump, and I'm not talking about a statement. When will we hear his voice with respect to this trial? When he is exonerated. Okay. I, I don't do predictions, but w when he is, when the whole thing is dead in the water, you will hear our old boss speak. Okay. I, I just, I'm intrigued by it because it's just a fascinating concept that the way he has stayed out of the spotlight, let this play out. But um, I, I'll be interested to see if that night he says something. All right, well, we'll have you back and we'll get to commiserate on whether or not uh, that happened. Anyway, it's always fun to have you, Seth. Look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you and the Newsmax viewers. Thank you, guys. You bet. Hi, Emma Reckenberg here. If you like this video, there's a whole lot more to see on Newsmax TV. You can watch for free right here on our YouTube live stream and be the first one here each time our experts break down real news. Just hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon, and stay with us on America's fastest growing cable news channel, Newsmax TV.